Hi, Stampers. Welcome to another week of Watch It Weekly Wednesday. I'm Beth, part of the Stamping Jill Creative team, and I have a really, really fun fall project to show and share with you today. We recently went to a Stampin' Up! event and received a, such a cute gift from Kathy Brown, who is a member of our team. Kathy is very creative and always has really fun 3D projects that she shares with us. This is not the actual one that she shared with us. This is the one I've remade using her idea. I actually had to tear hers apart <laughs> because I had to get the measurements of how to make the little insides. I'm gonna show you from beginning to end how to make this very, very cute little pumpkin box. We got this idea and immediately wanted to replicate it for an event we have coming up where we have about 100 attendees. We had to change a couple of the products that she had used because we had to mass produce it. So I'm gonna show you what we did and hopefully you'll find inspiration to use what you have on hand to make this really, really fun project. Okay, so let me show you the three different die sets that we used to make this cute little pumpkin. First is the Countryside Corners dies. That's the basis for the pumpkin, which when I looked at the shape, I didn't think pumpkin. It didn't scream pumpkin to me. But when you cut it out in some fun fall colored paper, you get these two cute little sides of a pumpkin. I thought that was just ingenious. So this is about, I think, the very middle size of the countryside corners dies that you would use. And you need two of those. I cut these out in the them bones paper. So one side is really Halloween-y, the other I'm gonna make kind of fall, but you could choose whatever works for you. Next is the nested essentials dies. You need this for the little stem of the pumpkin at the top here. And I cut that out in pecan pie, just using the very smallest of the little flag pendant die in there. And then I used the gorgeously made dies and the earthen texture stamp set. I liked this thank you. I thought it was kind of cute. And I pulled that from the earthen texture stamp set. I stamped it in pecan pie on basic white and got that and then I cut it out using this really cute little tag die from the gorgeously made die set. And I got my thank you. To top it off, you'll need the bow punch and it has these two cute little leaf patterns that punch out of it. We're gonna use the bigger one and we're gonna trim it down just a little bit to work for our pumpkin. Okay, we'll need some linen thread, about 36 inches, cut into 12 inch pieces. And then you'll need some dimensionals and some glue dots and I'm using Stampin' Seal Plus. You could also use green glue or you could use tear and tape. It kind of just depends on your preference, but you want something nice and strong. And then for the base of our box, you will need some basic black cardstock. So I'm gonna show you how to make this little box. I've made a template here. We're gonna cut a piece of basic black cardstock to four and an eighth by three and five eighths and I'm gonna show you how to score it using your trimmer so that you can create this little basic box. So bring your trimmer in. We're gonna use our scoring blade, which is the lighter gray. On the three and five eighths inch side of our paper, we are going to score in one and a half inches on each side. So we're gonna score right there. I'm gonna take my paper and flip it, and I'm gonna score one and a half there. Okay, so that gives me three different parts of that. Now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it just part way, and I'm gonna score in five eighths of an inch on each of these sides. Flip it and do the other end. Okay. So that's gonna give me my cute little template partway done here. So score in 5 8 inch from the top and the bottom and one and a half inches from each side. And that's gonna make our little panels for our box. Now I'm gonna take my um, paper snips and I'm gonna trim in on these four corners. I'm gonna just make some little triangles here so that I can fold my box so it's really clean so it doesn't have overlapping little pieces on it. The flaps just fit so nicely together if you can cut out a little bit of that cardstock. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to end up with. Again, there's the template. And if this is something you're interested in, we will have this posted on our blog so that you can reference each step of making these there. Okay, so here we're going to assemble our box. We're just gonna fold on each of those score lines and that's gonna give us our sides. And then we've got these pieces that we're going to fold and that will be the pieces that will fold together. So I like to put a bit of, this is um, Stampin' Sale Plus and I'm just gonna put a little dab there on this tab on the side and fold in my box. It kind of gives it just a little placeholder for you to um, make sure that your box gets really straight. I really like when my boxes are very straight. I like using basic black for the base too. It's a little bit of a heavier weight cardstock, so the box stays really sturdy and firm when you put your little treats inside. That way it can get a little handled and it doesn't really become worse for wear. I thought about making some of these for my kids for Halloween. I thought that might be kind of fun to pass out to their teachers or some friends at school. And so I need them to be a little sturdy if they're gonna take them in their backpack. Okay, so we've got our basic box put together there. And now we're just gonna build our pumpkin right on top of our basic box. So I'm gonna take those two pieces that we cut out with the Them Bones Designer Series paper and I'm gonna add those to my box. I'm going to put, again, Stampin' Sill Plus will hold these in place. I'm gonna line up the very bottom of my um, die-cutted piece here with that box and add that, and then I'm gonna flip it and do the same on the other side, and just put some of that adhesive right in the middle so it doesn't go off the box and make it sticky. And then same, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm lined up here at the bottom so it's nice and even there. That gives us our pumpkin. Now I'm gonna add our stem. This is the little piece of pecan pie from the Nested Essentials dies. You can just add some of that adhesive right there at the bottom and nestle it right here in the middle of our pumpkin. And I feel like once you add this, it really starts to take shape and looks more like a pumpkin. Just like that. Next, I am going to take my thank you and this again is cut out using the gorgeously made dies. And the thank you stamp is from the Earth and Texture stamp set. And I stamped that in pecan pie. I'm gonna adhere that with some dimensionals. Just pop it up there. And put it in that lower corner of my little pumpkin. All right, and then I've got my bow punch that I've punched out in garden green. I'm gonna use this bigger one. This is the size that we need for the pumpkin, the one that I use. So I just cut off the top two leaves and that long, long stem. Because if I use the long one, it looked too flowery to me. I liked it a little shorter that looked just kind of like the stem of a little pumpkin. So I'm gonna adhere that with a glue dot. And when Kathy made this, the reason I pulled it all apart is she had adhered it with um, our green glue that we carry. This is such a great glue. Obviously it held together very, very well because I could not revive it and show it to you, um, the original one that she made. Green glue is a great, great product. It is long lasting. Okay, now on to our bow here. Um, she had made like a little, cute little triple bow and I could not replicate how she had done it. I'm not exactly sure how she got it so perfect. So I came up with a simpler way to do this. So I took some linen thread. I love this linen thread, especially for fall stuff. And I cut 36 inches off of the spool and then I cut it into 12 inch pieces. So you need three 12 inch pieces or a 36 inch piece cut into thirds. And then I'm gonna just line them up like I did here and tie a bow with all three of them at the same time. This is, it turns out so cute. It's nice and dynamic. It's got a lot of texture to it. It's swirly. I just think it's so, so cute. And it actually ties a little bit easier when it has a little bit more weight to it of having the three like being tripled up. It made it a lot easier. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna just glue dot that on here over our little stem at the top to cover up where I cut that off. Just like that. You could trim that or leave it. I think it's kind of fun and swirly. I like it. 
Okay, and that's our box. That is our little pumpkin box. Now, you wanna put something in the box, and this box is the perfect size for some little Hershey nuggets. We can fit three in here. But we don't wanna just put the nuggets in. We wanna cover them in some of our designer series paper and make them coordinate, because that's what we do with Stampin' Up! So I'm gonna take some of the same paper um, and just, I've cut these to one inch by three inch and they'll wrap right around the nuggets. I'm gonna just put little pieces, again, of that Stampin' Silk Plus on the edges here. I'm gonna take the nuggets at the bottom, add my paper, and these aren't scored, I'm just gonna wrap as I go. And look how cute, it just coordinates so well. We'll add those into our little box. And just wrap and add it. And there we go, just like that. We've got a cute little gift to give to a neighbor, a friend, a teacher, maybe a customer, somebody that you're looking to say thank you to at this time of the year. So when we first received this project from Kathy Brown that she shared with us, this cute little pumpkin, I was surprised as I was going through to remake it at how many different dyes she used because I don't typically create that way. I usually stick to a bundle or something that coordinates, but this was so fun, you guys. So my challenge for you is you can remake this just as I have with the products that I used, but you might have something different to put your own spin on it that is already in your collection. So I would challenge you to look at your dies and think of what cute little things you can make using what you already have on hand and kind of let your creativity run wild. It was really, really fun to make this project work for what we needed it. And we're so grateful that Kathy shared her creation with us. Again, don't forget to check out our blog for the step-by-step -step instructions for this project. We loved making it, and I think that you could get a lot of use out of it this year as well. I know there were a lot of products that I used today, but we've got them all listed in the links below in our video description. You can check them out there, and don't forget to find our blog at stampingjill.com. We will see you next week for another Watch It Weekly Wednesday.